there's been a little bit of controversy um, with regards to Orson Scott Card and his political views. Um, how did you feel about that stuff? There was a battle. We won. Humanity won. And when I read the book when I was 12, I had, the, the book contains nothing of that controversy at all, and that still does not, and, and certainly neither does the movie. So oddly enough, the, uh, the movie is, a, uh, is about compassion and empathy, and it's a, it's a response, in a sense, to, to the controversy itself. Whenever I receive a, a beautifully realized screenplay, I have no tendency to go back to what Gavin has struggled to, cr to create from. Um, I, I, I feel that that might be, from my perspective as an actor, um, might be misleading. So my map, my road map, my journey through this film with Harrison and Asa is the wonderful screenplay that Gavin presented me with. I'm afraid I'm very much in the dark about anything around around that the, the screenplay. I, I don't. I, I'm rather I'm afraid rather ignorant about a debate if it's taken place. All I have is my wonderful roadmap of the screenplay and Gavin, and we just get, roll up our sleeves and get on with it. I think a lot of journalists have been saying to me, you know, the movie is obviously very different from what Orson Scott Card's current political views are on the issue of gay rights, and so. Um, I feel strongly the same. I, he and I happen to hold opposite points of view on this issue. Um, nevertheless, I am a fan of the book because it seems to me that the book, and this is what's tricky to reconcile, I think everyone will agree that one of the great things about the book is its themes of compassion and tolerance to the other. It's all about you cannot understand someone until you've walked in their shoes, and you must in order to be able to engage with them. So it's very tricky to say that a book that was written in 1984 by a young writer, I think he was probably in his late 20s at the time, um, which is his most famous piece, seems to be at odds with his views now. Um, and maybe it's a generational thing, maybe it's a religious thing, whatever it is, um, I still love the book. And I, it moved me. And I didn't know at the time I read it, perhaps naively, what his current views were. In fact, frankly, I hadn't read anything by Orson Scott Card. Um, and I read this book and I thought, wow, this is powerful and it's resonating with me and it's something that I could talk to my children about and, and, and relate to each other in the context of a fun, fabulous world. Here we are in space, jumping around in zero gravity and all these amazingly cool things. And yet at its heart, it has these profound questions of, you know, compassion and tolerance and how to understand the other. I thought, this is great. And then, and then I found out that he has these very, in my view, intolerant views towards issues of gay marriage that I disagree with. They're his views. He's entitled to his views. We simply disagree. And so I have to separate the art from the artist because I don't want to throw out the book that meant a lot to me and to many fans. And it's a dilemma. My view is that as hard as it is, art is separate from its creator. It is in the case of Richard Wagner and his music. It has to be in the case of Braveheart and Mel Gibson's sometimes crazy views on other issues. Braveheart is a great movie. Um, and that's hard. But we as artists are flawed human beings. And the work that we create hopefully sometimes rises above our own flaws. And I think that's the case with Ender's Game. For me, I think we're here to promote the film. And we love the story. but. The author's views is obviously something we don't agree with. We all agree with equal rights for everyone, and I think it's the film and the book are just different mediums. Yeah, I feel the same exact way. <laughs>